I got some indicators that are suggestive of the fact that there is a demon on your case. And this is coming from about 24 years of counseling experience and also of deliverance ministry. The first indicator is what I call accident and mishap prone. How many of you have escaped up to three near accident scenarios since the beginning of January? Anybody like that? I'm going to pray for you because whenever you notice that um, you are accident or mishap prone, it's an indication of the fact that a demon has been sent on your case. And I have scriptures to show you, just in case you are ready to come with me. I will invite you to the book of Job. Job chapter number one, beginning from verse number 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their elder eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses were feeding beside them. And the Sibians fell upon them and took them away. And ye, they have slain all the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and had burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking there came also another and said the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. Yea, they slain and slain the servants with the edge of the sword and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters. Now let me leave this, leave that 18 there. I want to, I want to explain something with 18. Accident. Mishap. Accident. Mishap. When you begin to see such patterns, it is highly suggestive of the fact that there is a demon, an intelligent personality that has been deployed to destabilize your life and to set up roadblocks against your possible achievement, attainment, fulfillment or success. Especially when it is reoccurring, we have a strong case to say that there is a demonic person. Meanwhile, it's interesting to know that this account we just read is about Job and those mishaps began to take place the moment the devil left the presence of God after negotiating with God to give him some allowance with Job, some latitude with Job, so that he could um, exploit Job and exploit his circumstance with the hope that Job will cause God to the face. So it was a competition that was taking place. God was bragging on Job and Satan was given the liberty to test the loyalty of Job to God. And Satan was uh, excited about it. And the moment uh, God gave him the permission, this items that we read about became the direct consequence of the devil's ex execution of uh, the contract that he had with God. There, so that's the layout of the scripture that I just read to us. And the symptoms that we see are resultant effects of demonic activity. You know, I told you yesterday that even though de demons are domiciled in the unseen realm, even though demons are persons without bodies, uh, do, not, do, not, do not be confused. Demons are highly intelligent. And that's why when they speak into your thoughts, you don't even know that those thoughts are not yours. Demons are masters of masquerading. They can hide their personalities. They can hide behind the shadows. They can hide behind circumstances. They can hide behind situations. And you will blame everything. You will blame everyone except them. So in terms of being able to hide their personalities, they are masters of the game. And once that's why if you check the account of the servants that were spared to bring the testimony, you will notice that demons manipulated physical things is either they manipulated persons to attack them or they manipulated circumstances to resist them and verse 18 that i said you should hold on about 
even though it is still part of the trend, it is a standalone example. I have seen this one with my eyes. This one, I've seen it. So it, for me, it's a standalone example. He said, while he was yet speaking, there came an also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their elders' brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness. I have this one. I know, I know, I know this one. I know this one. I know how that demons can travel through what we call wind and wreck havoc. So whenever you see this pattern of this accident prone pattern and mishap prone pattern, it is suggestive of the fact that there is an intelligent entity, assassin, that has been contracted to do damage around your life. And just in case you used to dwell in peace and in safety, it is suggestive. The situation is suggestive that you need to rise up and fight. Now, during the course of the lecture, you will be taught how to fight. Because someone might be saying, I don't know how to engage. Don't worry about that. We have rules of engagement in spiritual war. And we also have a full documentary of the channels of spiritual power that you can take advantage of during the course of spiritual warfare. Uh, the major problem uh, you will discover among warriors is not that they do not know the tools. It's just that they are not consistent enough in the engagement. So in order to build some cons consistency, one of the days we come here for lecture, we will not be lecturing at all. We'll just pray in tongues for two hours first. And then we maybe we'll lecture for 30 minutes. And then we'll pray in tongues again for 40 minutes and we'll go. The reason for that is an endurance building. Because when you are locked on with a witch, for instance, one of the things that witches are taught in the covens is the ability to endure. So you are casting spells and you endure. You can cast spells for 48 days. The same spell. The same spell. That's why it's as if um, there are some things that reoccur. Do you, can you imagine the kind, that demon that, that was responsible for the woman that was bowed down 18 years? The demon never snapped to take a cup of coffee. The demon never said, oh my God, it's now cold. I need to. 18 years, the demon was there ensuring that the woman had the coverture of the spine. And if you are going to deal with these entities, you must put on the right frame of mind. You must not have retreat and surrender in your philosophy. You must be trained on how to stay put and engage. So that's the reason why we're going to do an endurance prayer moment, endurance prayer moment, just so that you could um, release your prayer valves. And you know, it's just like when you walk on your car and change the engine, uh, the, the mechanic will need to fire it so that the valves can slack. You see, we need to slack your valves. It's a test of endurance that will equip you with what it takes to be consistent because witches are consistent. Necromancers are consistent. Warlocks are consistent. And if warlocks and witches notice that you are consistent, they will leave you for a season. Satan likes fighting infants. People that will put in impute for a, a while and get tired. Those are the kind of people that Satan rules. Hallelujah. But if you are like some of us that have suffered too much in the hands of the devil, we have no other duty other than to remain in that fight. Because we know the moment you, you, you show signs of weakness, you are gone. Hallelujah. If you have gone around the world the way I've done, uh, you will learn one or two things. Sometimes you just come to some nations, their idols are the airport. They are, they are, they are welcoming you. They say, all right, you know this territory, we, this is where we did. Now here we did. All right? So when you are entering, you already see their symbols at the airport. You know that you are not entering a, friend, a friendly territory. When other people go to sleep, you wake up. Even if they give you a water bed, don't sleep on it. We went to Benin Republic. And I just started preaching and then people started, some people started manifesting seriously and salivating. A lot of saliva was coming out of their mouth and they broke, they, they, before, they, before this one will become, other, other people were arrested. I, I just started preaching. Saliva. And in my experience in ministry, when I see those symptoms, those are people that came in with charms to come and test, test me with power. If you, if you don't know Jesus, don't, you see, avoid Benin Republic, avoid Togo, avoid, you know, you can preach in Lagos and shout hallelujah in Lagos. Don't cross the border. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do all you are doing in Makodi. Don't cross the border. You need to know Jesus that has called you before you go to the northern Ghana. Before you go there, you need to know you must be rooted. If not, you are just going as a slaughter. Those are ancient, ancient sorcerers that know the way of the night. 
They know how to greet spirits. How to... Oh, Jesus. 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 So we got there. People were salivated. All kinds of deliverance. We started serious deliverance. In fact, then the second day we came for a prayer meeting. They brought pastors. Um, pastors from the land. And uh, the person that put up the meeting wanted to encourage the pastors. So it's okay. Let the pastors from the land lead prayer. One pastor after another. The first pastor led. I, I, I touched my host. I said, where did you get this one? They know he's one of the champions of the land. No, this one is not of God. He said, he was thinking, so I said, he's not of God. So yes, sir. He brought the second one, came and gave something like a revelation. I said, no, no, that revelation, no, no. By the time we were done, we knew we were in the wrong place. We were in the wrong place. So when I finished preaching in the day, and I come back to the hotel in the night, I dress up very well, and I'm waiting for the witches that we try to come out. Because I know the way they behave. And their peak time is on 12 midnight to 2 a.m. When you should be, when you were, most of us know. Ah, I was, I was waiting. Ah. It seems they came and peeped and saw that I was waiting, so they, they left. <laughs> but they can do damage to you. They can do damage to you. They catch you off guard. Are you there? We were passing to Cameroon and we decided to stop at Togo. When we stopped at Togo, uh, we now said, okay. We'll spend two days here. Let's hold, hold a meeting. Before you knew it. I think we had 600 people. And in the eyes of our people in Togo, that was the greatest meeting in Togo. To get 600 speak. I said, that was how we started. The hand of God began to move. And they, they almost drove us from that venue. That the crowd was too much for the venue. God began to move all kinds of... And I, I know Togo. So when we finish all the meetings in the evening, when we go back, we wait for a counter-attack. I know this by experience. You don't go, you don't play in Togo. You don't play in Benin Republic. You don't play in Cote d'Ivoire. You don't play in Nigeria. You don't play in Mali. You don't play in, in Burkina Faso. Go and play somewhere else. You can go to where? In fact, <laughs> it's only here you can play. <laughs> If you are still with me, say amen. You can play here because we have perforated the spiritual atmosphere and, and you know it's a good place. If you want to be slack spiritually, be slack under this atmosphere, nothing will happen to you. But in fact, it's too late for you because you are the foot soldiers of Jesus that will round up all the elements of darkness that are still locking around. And unfortunately for you, you are the prophet of your family. Second symptom that demons are on your case is what we call the near miracle syndrome near miracle syndrome the person almost got married and then something now happened the moment it happens twice and a pattern has been created don't go to the psychiatrics don't attend a class of in, in philosophy look for how to expel devils you are already in the center of a situation of warfare near miracle syndrome or you see someone that is so graced someone that is so full of potential but translating the potential into something worthwhile is almost an impossibility. You hit a brick wall anytime you begin to make motions for advancement. It is very highly probable, highly probable that a demonic entity has been smuggled into the equation. Are you still with me? We were in the university and there was this guy that my friend went and brought. Strange guy, just strange guy. So he was now with us, squatting with us in the room and all of that. Then we came one day and saw that he had drank, um, you know, those days, I don't know whether they still sell it. There's something with, there's a called shaving powder those days. Shaving powder. Do they still sell such things now? Okay. That's the shaving powder of those days, if, if they still have it. Okay. All right. All right. The guy had drank shaving powder to die. So when we came, we slapped him on the back and he vomited what he drank. You know, we had crude ways of... Uh, attending to cases uh, some, sometimes we slap on the back so we slapped him on the back many times he now vomited the things that he took in and he was angry with us that we did not allow him to die so when he calmed down he began to tell us his story that this was not the first university he has attended he attended so 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 place and while he was advancing towards the end of graduating he had a crisis went somewhere again continued and was making some progress about to finish first semester second semester <coughs> Then they now brought him to Benin State University and he joined us. And then the same symptoms that he used to know 
the wind that normally comes that capacitates him that makes him unable to finish anything he starts has started mounting and started gathering so he couldn't take it anymore he decided that before we come back from lecture that day he would just kill himself because there was no reason for him to live hallelujah so we now allowed him to calm down when he told out his story he cried we also pretended that we we're crying with him we all ay, 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 what, 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 yeah. <laughs> we have become many things because the Lord asked us to preach to him. <laughs> so we did all that and when we recovered ourselves we now began to interview him to know where the demons were coming from and then it was not a secret to him his, member was a, his father was a member of a secret cult and uh, his father wanted him to take his seat upon his death in the cult because that's the way of the cult to keep the cult alive someone that is in your family must take your place must bear your title must carry your staff must wear your ring and must wear your robe so it was time for him to be initiated so that he can be next in line to mount the father's throne Big, oh my i don't have time to tell you about his father and then the guy said he's not going to inherit what the father was offering and the father brought three keys one day if you are an ancient you will know what those three keys mean three golden keys it was by those three keys that he cost that young man so the guy is very intelligent if he puts his hand to something he can make so much creativity out of it but you see a wind begins to gather and when that atmosphere begins to form it doesn't matter the height he has attained he will not be able to accomplish anything he will just not be able to accomplish anything and he felt so incapacitated in the face of that challenge that when he saw it forming the third time he just felt okay the best thing to do was for him to take his life now the reason why i'm not going into details about this young man is because some of you are from his village if I explain further, you'll be able to trace the young man. And that is not my intention. His identity is supposed to be kept confidential. But if I want to press further, some of you will identify him. So what I'm telling you is not, it's not made up. These are real life stories. Unfortunately, even when we identified the problem and we began to prescribe solutions to the young man, and part of the solutions was that when I'm going for prayer by 5 a.m., because that was my culture when I was on campus, I will never read any book. I will never attend any lecture except I've seen God and God releases me from my prayer place. I'm in detention until Jesus releases me from detention every day. I don't read nothing. And even in the night, when I come prepared to read, we'll start reading from 7, we'll read till 12 midnight, and then from 12 midnight we'll go for prayers. It is after that prayer that we, we can continue reading. I had a bed on campus that I never used. Because I was a scholar in my own right. So someone discovered that I was not using my bed. So the person gave glory to God, gave thanks to God, and began to help himself. Until I came and discovered that there was an entity that was taking advantage. So it was either I was reading or I was praying. So we were now trying to induct the guy into that lifestyle of praying always. And he felt we were, we just like to suffer. That we love suffering. This is a man that almost killed himself. Now since that we, like suffering that's why we go for prayer so is, that, is, is there no format is there no easier format to engage this thing you know you know i don't i'm not i'm not called out for this kind of stuff i'm not made for this kind of thing he started speaking phonetics you know the end of the story what you are thinking is correct he was cut off he was cut off so there was no way as intelligent as that guy was there was no way he could achieve anything worthwhile because there was a resistance that was placed in his way this resistance was invincible but it was potent enough to stop him to immobilize him to discourage him and it could even bring him to the point where he was willing to take his life just in case you are in this place tonight and you've been experiencing near miracle syndrome it might be in the area of your career it might be in the area of marriage the first person comes looks upon you and say, oh my God, what a beautiful damsel. Your open teeth is in alignment and all kinds of good comments on your life. Two weeks into the relationship, three weeks it begins to go stale and in the fourth week, the person blocks you on Instagram, blocks you on Facebook, blocks you on YouTube, blocks you everywhere and blocks your number. If the person has Samsung, Samsung phone, it becomes easier to block. Samsung knows, they know that you want to block people. So they made it Aiko Santoria, he came in to Kami. You know something? Sometimes we need to punctuate in tongues. Uh, may the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. Blocked everywhere. And then another time you are going home in a bus and you see someone and the person looks upon you and says, 
the conductor wanted to insult you. The person came into the fight. I said, hey, you don't do that. And so when you drop from the boat, the person said, the reason why I was fighting is because you are clean. Said, ah. And when you begin to progress with it, you now notice that it's this cloud that comes in and everything goes still. If you have seen that for about two times, it means we have an entity in this equation that we need to deal with. And the purpose of these lectures is to bring you to a point where we can deal with it. And indeed, it shall be dealt with. In the name of Jesus. Third indication that demons are involved is that there is a pattern. You see a pattern. There is a science behind it. There's a science, a pattern. You know, the moment there is a pattern, it means that there's an intelligent personality that is behind it. There's a science behind it. A consistent pattern. This is how it happened in this generation. This is how it happened in another generation. This is how it is beginning to happen in this generation. As long as there's a pattern behind it, it is suggestive of the fact that there is a spiritual entity that is taking advantage. No matter how medical science may make attempts to explain to you that your situation, that is how it is and all of that, if that thing is hereditary, are you there? There, there, there was a testimony that someone, um, there was this guy that was supposed to go for surgery the next day in London. And while I wanted to pray for the person, the Lord touched me and said, I will help you. I said, oh my God, it's great. Instantly, I had a screen, a prophetic screen opened before my face. And as I was praying for him, I was seeing the kidney, how the kidney was coming back. I was praying for him. I was seeing the kidney. And the moment I saw that the kidney was restored, I stopped praying for him. And I told him that you have a new kidney. He, you know, he, he doesn't believe God. So he didn't even say amen. He just looked at me like this. Because they forced him to come for the meeting. He felt his auntie that brought him for the meeting was just uh, trying to waste his time. So, so that he will not receive further disturbance from the auntie, he, he just came. Okay? That's a good reason to come. And then God picked on his case and I saw new kidneys. The guy went for the procedure the next day and the doctors had to do a few tests before they start the process and they saw that it was a new kidney. They were angry. Obviously, you know that the doctors don't believe in God. The only thing they believe is science. And it is impossible in science for that situation to find expression. Because the last test was like three days from that time ago and then a few days later a new kidney was given to him. So when the doctor they did the test again, it was the same. They had to write a report and uh, the report they wrote was that the kidneys healed itself. That was the closest admittance to the presence of the healing power of God. You will not believe that after that happened, the mother of the boy, that happens to be the elder sister of the person that brought the boy for the meeting now asked the younger sister you have to tell me what you went to do. What voodoo did you go? Did you do on my son that his kidney is healed? So in our own eyes, it was voodoo. It was something negative. So we didn't receive. Thank you for praying for me. No, we said no, no, no. You went for voodoo. That's the reason why God doesn't go far with you. What is the hope of the world? People don't believe God anymore. Even when He does miracles that doctors cannot explain, it's just like the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit was moving, and some people say it was new wine. And that's the reason why I pray for signs and wonders that God will increase the miracle working, his miracle working power on my life so that even the wise will be confounded by the power of Jesus. If it becomes a pattern, then an intelligent personality is behind it and we need to track the person down so that we can dispossess him of the space, the workshop that he's operating in. Third symptom is what we call cyclical situations or reoccurring situations. One thing keeps going and coming. Keeps going and coming. Keeps going and coming. If you give it some time, it will relapse. And after a while, it will rise again. If it becomes cyclical, you can even tell that it is April. During the month of April, it begins to come back. If you see that situation, then it is highly probable that there is an entity behind it that we need to discover and we need to disarm. Are you still with me? All right. So, unnatural and prolonged poverty. Prolonged poverty. It is not as if you are a lazy person. You are not a lazy person. You are a hardworking person, active person. You even make attempts to put things together, to make things work. 
You try to pioneer things, to start things. And you meet with resistance. So that you have been in a prolonged state of lack. It is a sign of resistance. It means that you are at war. And I tell you, God set up all of this which is going on here is to give you ventilation, a breath of fresh air. Yes, such experiences exist with God. And I pray tonight that God will reach out to you in the name of Jesus. Then finally, there is what we call heaviness. When that heaviness comes upon you, it's more than a mood swing. It cuts you off. There's no way I can, I don't have the right words to explain it. But the Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord, that he might be glorified. The Lord wants you to be his planting. He wants you, be, you to become a tree of righteousness. Anywhere he plants you. So that you can install righteousness as your working principle. In the marketplace, in your office area. Alright? What he wants to gain from nurturing your life is that you will become a tree of righteousness. He's ready to invest in those that mourn in Zion. He's ready to give beauty for ashes. Ready to make available the oil of joy in the place of mourning. Just in case your situation is mourning, mourning. Demons don't want you to rejoice. Oh my God, there is enough provision for your case. There is an oil of joy that God has allocated to all those that mourn in Zion. You will think that Zion is not a place for mourning. But God knows that people will mourn in Zion, so he made preparation. For those that are caught up in ashes, he has a destiny or beauty. Those that mourn, he has manufactured the oil of joy. And those that are taken by the spirit of heaviness, the Bible says he has made a tunic available, a garment of praise, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe, and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.